So this is great to have the last um, presentation of the day. My name is Jesse Beach. I work at Acquia. I'm one of the front end developers there working on the Spark team. And uh, for the most part, I work on JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. I wouldn't say that I am at all an accessibility expert. Um, but what I am is someone who's very interested in data and access and people getting to information that they need and information that they want. So I kind of fell into this accessibility space uh, in October of 2012 at the Toronto um, camp, the Drupal Toronto camp. We were working on the toolbar and we had to meet the accessibility gate, the Drupal accessibility gate. I had no idea what that meant at the time. So I spent a full day working with Everett, uh, Zufelt, Mike Gifford, a bunch of other people, uh, and I really got a sense of how far from the mark we were in terms of accessibility and how rich the space is, um, providing uh, means of access to complex applications like the toolbar in Drupal Core. And it started me down this road of wanting to make all of Drupal accessible. I know I'm not the first person who's wanted to do this. I'm certainly not perhaps the best person to do this, uh, but I'm someone who jumps into something, um, you know, even if I'm stepping on toes and knocking over glasses, uh, who wants to see, you know, good UI be made. So this is a talk about what we're doing at the moment in terms of accessibility in Drupal and what we might do into Drupal 9 with perhaps um, setting up uh, you know, an initiative, something bigger, that gets us formal structure behind these efforts. Uh, so if you go to this bit.ly URL, I set up a uh, Google document with notes. I would love it if you, know, you feel like you have something to say or something to add, if you could add your comment to notes on this page. I'll lock down the page afterwards and open it for comments, but it'll be a place where we can go back to and find names of people or organizations, ideas we can incorporate into later plans. So I'll just give everyone like two seconds to jot that down. What I'll do is talk a little bit about what we're doing at the moment and then some efforts beyond. Okay. The reason we want to improve accessibility in Drupal Core is because it is simply the right thing to do. There is, you know, you can talk about perhaps economic reasons, you can talk about, you know, you as a provider wanting to move into a space such as government that requires you to be accessible. But from my perspective as a developer, there is no justification for building something that someone cannot access in my mind. So if we look at a project like WordPress, and I, I thank Mike Gifford for bringing this up during our conversation yesterday. If we look at uh, this plugin in WordPress called WP Accessibility. Has 3,049 downloads. Out of 20 million downloads for WordPress core, and about 5,683,000 domains that are running WordPress. The reason I bring this up is it was suggested in our conversation that the accessibility support in WordPress is not ideal. And if you think about that as a percent, there are 0.0536% of WordPress sites running this module potentially to improve the basic accessibility of WordPress. There are currently 615,000 domains running Drupal. And to my mind, solving this problem in core means that we hit all of those domains, all of those sites. It's not something that we want to push out to contrib space in terms of support. So we are building the standards in Drupal core. One of those is the WCAG, the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines and the ATAG, or the Authoring Tool Accessibility Guidelines. There's a page on Drupal.org that specifies that we support these two guidelines in terms of accessibility. 
but we really don't know if we do. That's the problem. The problem is we, we don't measure our support of these two guidelines in terms of Drupal core. And what I'd like us to do as we approach uh, code freeze in Drupal 8 and then the cleanup phase is to think about how we might measure our support of these two guidelines before we produce the official release of Drupal 8. So what we might do is a full review of all core admin pages. You know, every route that we have, run it through a, a, a validator, an HTML validator, run it through a tool like the Wave tool on Firefox, and just get a baseline number of how many errors there are on that page, and then log an issue for it. We would also want to do a full review of the core templates to make sure that things like field templates have the attributes that are necessary to make those things accessible. And then what I'd really like to see is an effort similar to the HTML5 effort and the Twig conversion effort, where we create essentially a scoreboard of every template and every page in Drupal and give it a grade, you know, or its percent of support. If it has three errors in the Wave toolbar, then it has, you know, a negative three score, and we want to get them all to zero. I'm not really sure how we would measure this, but we want to have some way of comparing them and knowing when we get to done for Drupal 8. And I would say that the number of people working in accessibility uh, in Drupal core that I see regularly, which is definitely not everybody, but you know, it's maybe a dozen who are there uh, in the queues every week. I would love to see people who are actually accessibility experts jump in and help us do testing, help us do reviews. I don't think you would need uh, too much knowledge of code to jump in, load up an admin site, run it through a toolbar to check for errors, and then log those somewhere on Drupal.org. So I mentioned a couple of tools. I was just introduced to the Wave toolbar in Firefox. Essentially what this does is it looks at your rendered HTML page and it indicates through warnings and errors on the page where you might have problems, such as missing an alt tag on your images. We also have markup validators. Um, these to me are, are useful. Um, they won't bring out errors in highly dynamic pages because they're just going to look at the rendered content that comes back from Drupal. And then moving into the future, we might look at more automated means of doing testing. The Quail module, this is a, a JavaScript framework that does testing. I've talked with um, Peter Drogmans about perhaps working this into the test swarm module, which we've begun uh, developing front-end tests against. And then moving something that, like that perhaps into the text, test bot for um, testing patches as they're proposed. Another interesting tool for the content creation side would be WYSIWYG integration, letting authors know at the time of authoring that an image that they've just added to the page is missing alt tags. So at the moment, there are about 116 open issues with the accessibility tag against them. Some of these are meta issues, some of these are highly specific issues, but um, to my mind, they don't represent at all the full amount of work that we have to do against Drupal 8. And then we get down to this idea that the guidelines themselves are extremely difficult to understand. I, I myself have read them perhaps you know, four or five times over, and I still don't really understand what they're trying to make me do or what they would like me to do, uh, those being the, the WCAG and the ATAG guidelines. So what I've tried to do is, um, and, and this is through talking with Mike and Vincenzo, is to understand the principles behind the guidelines and to apply those in my work rather than the specifics. So those are, um, a UI should be perceivable, you should know that something is there. Uh, if you come to our talk, uh, Wim and I are giving a talk tomorrow about views, oral UIs, 
backbone. We'll give you really stark examples of how things are not perceivable currently in Drupal core. Operable refers to um, being able to take action against something in the UI. Um, understandable, if you could imagine uh, a link in a comment that just says one new, you know, there's one new comment, and that link repeated 10 times on a page with no further context, you've uh, eliminated the possibility of understanding what that means to an on-sited user. And then I think robustness is just the general principle of UIs in general, but especially for um, the UIs we don't spend the most time on, you know, the visual UIs. For oral UIs, we want to make sure that they are accessible and um, usable always in the same way. We don't want to be introducing new patterns or anti-patterns into these UIs. So I would say that as front-end developers, we're extremely invested in producing highly polished, usable, visual experiences. But when it comes to building experiences that are non-visual, oral UIs, keyboard UIs, we don't have the experience and we don't have the patterns available to us to do those, that sort of work. So if I was to list the major components or the um, systems in Drupal that need work at the moment, like actual design work, Views is at the top of the list. And thankfully the Views team is in complete agreement that the accessibility of that subsystem of Drupal is, um, we'll say nicely, lacking at the moment. We know that what the major issues are. Um, they're going to be hopefully addressed during this DrupalCon, one of them being switching to using the uh, dialog API that was introduced to Drupal 8 in views that will open up uh, the possibility to work on further issues that are sort of blocked at the moment by that. There's still a bit more work to, to go with the field API and specific fields uh, to, to make sure that they have all the attributes and um, the descriptive accessibility elements. And then I really want to look at the subsystems like content creation, block placement, the things that people are going to do on a daily basis and make sure that those are highly refined, usable, there's nothing hidden, everything can be found. And it's kind of a dream. I would love to be able to have uh, an oral UI for field states in the same way that we introduced um, you know, AJAX support for fields or states for fields where if you, you, know, you click a checkbox, you, you can associate um, another set of uh, field items with the, the state of that checkbox. It would be great if we could have automatic um, informative information based on fields produced orally as well as visually. Yeah, and views, we have to fix that. I don't know if there are oral UI designers. I think it's, exactly, so um, when we say UI designer, we're implicitly saying visual UI designer, right? Someone who comes in, produces boxes and arrows and you know layouts. But that's just one way of producing data output, a view of data. An oral UI, something that you hear, is another way of accessing that information. And we tend not to think of an oral UI as something you can design because I don't think we've really taken the time to design it. If you think about visual UI 40 years ago when the first mouse and click interfaces were introduced, no one knew what they were doing. They were inventing metaphors. They were inventing patterns to take bits and present them to people in visual um, presentations. And I want us to do the same thing in Drupal. I, I think we are going to be pioneers in this space of presenting information through oral means. And by the same token, we need to think about how we access information from a keyboard consistently throughout Drupal. You know, are there hotkeys and combos that we can build in so that if I press C or S or A, they do something consistently in views and content creation you know, across the board? So if anyone knows an oral UI designer or someone who produces spoken UIs, uh, bring them into Drupal. I think 
they have the opportunity to really impact a lot of people around the world. So the short-term plan, this is to do with just getting us to Drupal 8 launch, meeting our proposed or our professed support of WCAG and ATAG, is to make sure we're testing. And this is where we need everyone in the community because we do not have the resources at the moment to both build and test at the same time. People out here, if you work for a university, if you work for a company, if you have access to testing facilities, anything at this point will help us log an issue. And once the issue is logged, there are folks who will address it. Um, you know, we have a small number of folks, but they're highly um, efficient. And they, they really burn through issues. And then what I really think we need are folks who develop in the modality that is their primary modality. My primary modality is visual. I want to understand how people interact with data in different ways, but it's very hard for me. It takes a lot of interaction and learning, and I feel like I just, I will never get the UI perfect for someone who wants to access data in a non-visual way. We're starting to see that, people coming into our community whose modality of interaction is non-visual, who are also developers. And this excites me so much because they bring um, patterns of usage to our community that we, we are, are lacking at this moment. So if you know someone, a developer, who wants to spend a little bit of time volunteering, bring them into Drupal. Let them know that there are developers who will teach them all of the you know, intricacies of working with Drupal in order to get them being productive and producing code. The long-term plan, I really think we need something that has the formality and the structure of an initiative in the same way that we had mobile, whiskey, scotch, for Drupal 9. I want to see meetings, um, well, I hate meetings, but they're very useful. I want to have people getting together, talking about these issues, laying out priorities, that's what I really like. Priorities, getting issues in the queue in order and addressing them, you know, top to bottom. All right, so I'm gonna open it now to questions um, that we can save for posterity. And if anyone is inside the notes, please take notes on questions and we will address them later. I wanted to bring up, uh, I hope this is appropriate, um, perhaps a larger movement that's around this that's often referred to as universal design. And I wanted to point out, I think this is a, a, a great, no pun intended, visionary effort that's going on, not only for um, blind users or for people with um, motor limitations uh, for using websites, but also for the future of Drupal. When it comes to vision, uh, this is an oral UI. And it's very hard. Is editing. Loud. It's very hard for blind Blue users text. Button. to Cancel. use Button. Selected. Tweet. Common User. tab. Real time streaming enabled. In progress. Last update. You know, it's really hard for blind users to use um, typical devices, and these typical devices will become harder for visual, you know, for visually normal people also to use as, as they get smaller. And if we are actually ready with universal design, we'll be, the, we'll be the first CMS on the Apple Watch, for example, or for other uh, devices that uh, rely less on our ability to touch them and see them, and more on our ability to hear them and interact with them vocally. So for what that's worth. Yeah, thank you, Kay. So following up on the previous point there, um, would oral design, do you think, also include, you know, like the device in that case is speaking the functionality of the system, and that's hard enough as is, but if you're dealing with a touch screen or uh, something like that where you don't have a physical keyboard, then inputting data of some form is just as hard, if not harder. Should we be looking at, you know, what would it take to make Drupal voice capable? for when there is such a tool that allows that. I have no idea what that would look like. I have no idea what the standards are there, if anything, but is that something we should be asking about at this point? 
Yeah, definitely. Okay. I mean, that excites me as a developer. You know. So, I, mean, I don't know, are there any specs along those lines for, you know, browsers not just outputting data uh, in the audible format, but also inputting data? I don't know if anything there that's not Google proprietary. So just to repeat that, uh, Mike said that Dragon, naturally speaking, is one such input um, modality. There was an effort by Everett Zufeld to um, collaborate with them, but that didn't go anywhere. Okay, I guess and personally, I don't know anything beyond Google proprietary mm -hmm. you know, voice APIs uh, built into Chrome where we could do that. But yeah, I would love to see yeah, I mean, sort of input. Kind of where, I'm, where I'm kind of going is you know, what would it take to give a Drupal site the kind of interactivity that something like Google Now has? Probably an awful lot, but it'd be really cool if we could Definitely. for everybody. Um, I'm, thank you also for your, all your hard work. The, um, uh, this is something that's been on my mind as long as I've been working in web, but I've, n like, I've, I've never found anyone willing to pay for it. So, like, and, and the biggest, practical struggle in my experience is that so much of accessibility has to start with content authors, like even just the base, you know, the alt tags, you know, if you're uploading an image, so many people are just going to skip it and they're not going to put that in. But my, you know, my clients don't want to pay me to make an alt tag a requirement for them to upload an image. So like, it, like to me, the, like it, you, you nailed it when you talked about testing because it, like as much, I mean, I've read WCAG and it's like two pages long. I mean, there's nothing hard in there, like technically. Like, have, has, has there, do you know of any work around automated testing of scan this page for accessibility errors? And, because I mean, if we could make that a feature where you check this box and every time you have an accessibility error, you get warned or you get whatever, to me that, that would make, that would bring the, at least the awareness level up and you know, that would, it would give us a place to start. Yeah, so Falcon brought up yesterday this idea of doing almost like an error log of accessibility problems during content authoring. So that if you did have a workflow, you know, where an individual content creator didn't produce the optimal output, you could have uh, an editor come by and perhaps fix that or at least maybe in farm it out to a third party service. Uh, that would do that sort of thing if you needed to. The, the two realms of content creation and site building, to me, aren't defined well enough yet in terms of our community to understand what the different um, responsibilities in those two areas are. And I, I think that's something that we need to suss out still. So my question is sort of about the, I guess, the known unknowns and the unknown unknowns. I work at a, a university, and I'm curious, do, like, do we have the, the tests in place in real world stuff? Like, I, can, I have a usability lab, so I could sit students and people in a library who are using JAWS or any of these tools down in front of a, in front of Moray or something like that and actually test them and get that, I guess, distributed to the community. But do you guys have that yet? Is, does anybody have that? Is it posted anywhere? Or do we, is that a contribution that needs to be made? I think that's a contribution that needs to be made, posting those videos somewhere would be some, that's completely valuable. Something that someone could run through and create issues off of and have as a, a physical artifact to go back to. Yeah, if you could do that, awesome. So I, I thought I'd give a status update because I'm the person responsible for making accessible content and then disappearing for a year. Um, but also run Quail. So um, Quail actually has a branch with, Q, with QUnit integration now. Um, so that it would be really easy to integrate with TestSwarm. But I think a, a challenge would be, it, as a community, is to identify uh, test suites beyond just straight accessibility guidelines, but also that incorporate best practices that are not necessarily uh, encompassed in WCAG or 508. 
Um, and I, I think it, it would be, we, we have had in, in D6 modules that gave feedback to theme developers and to content creators. Um, so those should be catching up with D7 and D8 shortly. But I think if, if even beyond test worm integration, uh, even looking at some form of like QA.drupal.org for people who are just writing interfaces would be also an uh, interesting thing to look at. Do you think we could support dynamic interfaces? Um, yeah, so Quail 2, which is in JavaScript, already does support that, and we have tests written and that are working in uh, Travis CI that, that do do a lot of dynamic interface Ajax loaded stuff. Um, the challenge is figuring out how to, you, you do need to train the test about what areas of that content do you want to look out for and wh what events you want to react to. So that would be, you know, another challenge. Awesome. Let's talk after this. Yeah. I just want to say, um, you know, I think it's great that we're talking about getting testing in place to make sure that we're s satisfying accessibility standards. I just had an audit done on my site, and I, um, I was trying to think about what can we automate in terms of future pages, and I realized that a lot of that stuff just can't be automated. Like, a lot of them are design-centric, you know, color contrast issues, um, sensible navigation order. Um, so a, a lot of these things have to do, I think, with, with design. And I'm wondering, um, you know, is, is, is the appropriate path for that education towards like Drupal designers? Um, or like on the contrib space, is there a way that like, we can evaluate like contributed themes in terms of their accessibility? Because I think that's a big piece of it that can't just be automated. Yeah, those are good points. I don't think I have answers. Um, to me, anything that any sort of educational material needs to be so immediately perceivable and consumable that folks don't have to, you know, think about it too much. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Um, at, at the very least, we can make sure the core themes satisfy the design. Definitely, to me, yeah. those those are part of core, and those would satisfy. But I, I hadn't really separated the two in my mind yet. So I, I thank you for bringing that up. That mm -hmm. there's only so far we can take automation, and then. Education is the only way to, to bridge that. And, to, and, and testing, like with usability labs, as was mentioned before, I mean, that's a big part of it. Definitely. Yeah. Um, even exposure. I mean, that just yeah. produces exposure to the larger development community. It has a value. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much, Jesse. This has been good. Um, just wanted to, to, uh, to add the, 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 yeah, the one level in terms of the, the the automated testing only gets you so far. So there's a lot of stuff that we can do to go off and to, um, to help with automated testing to identify the low-hanging fruit and the basic basic elements. But we need to um, to also try and engage with the communities who have the, the people with expertise who can do, deal with this. And it was great to have uh, somebody at the back was, was talking about you know trying to engage their their uh, usability lab and trying to go off and bring in students with uh, uh, with disabilities to be involved but there's a lot of different kinds of people and a lot of different kinds of, of disabilities that that are, are uh, blocking people from having access to uh, to to your website and, and, and the um, blind the blind community is certainly one but it's not the uh, necessarily even the hardest of the the, the the types of people that you need to that uh, the WK is, is dealing with. So uh, there's uh, dealing with people with cognitive issues and learning disabilities and with people with multiple disabilities. Uh, there's a, lo a range of, of potential people to try and, and uh, to, to try and, and work towards being able to, to make your content, make the content accessible. Um, but uh, uh, I wanted to go up and, and uh, uh, to talk just briefly about the, uh, um, it was, it was um, about, uh, Looking at at the the uh, the standards and, and and a lot of these things are becoming um, are still forming and I think that that I'm in conversations with people at at ATAG who are or at the WC3 who are start trying to define these these definitions and define best practices. And there's a really interesting opportunity to go off and have ATAG be reference or to have ATAG reference Drupal and Drupal's uh, admin interface as as sort of the the, the uh, best best practice by defined by the WC3 in terms of implementation of these these tools. Um, I think we're we're further ahead than any other CMS out there, uh, and there's still so much more to do. But the WC3 doesn't have that many implementations to to sort of point to. So, um, anyway, just wanted to raise those those issues. So, what could we do to help people who want to test but 
are faced with you know the totality of Drupal and they need to somehow distill that into a, a 25 minute session do you think we could put together a, a list of com, you know subsystems or even just list like our top 10 admin pages that we would love to see tested and that will get the ball rolling it, it would certainly help if we I mean, we haven't had a uh, a full audit of Drupal 7 period that, that mm -hmm. it has not been audited by an external party for accessibility and there was a, an effort that the accessibility team tried to put together to have a um, an audit but it comes down to, to, to who's who's going to fund it and it's, it's something that you know somebody who is a good auditor will charge um, in the range of you know $400 a page to go off an audit and there's a lot of pages just in core if you're looking at you know all of the different admin screens and that's you know potentially thousands of dollars if you haven't prepared and organized and I mean you know hundreds of thousands of dollars if you haven't prepared and organized but you know it's, it's a it's a it's something that that needs to be thought through strategically and there needs to be a team to are willing to, co to committed to deal with that and again with Drupal 8 you know it's, it's many of the same problems are where we're relying on people to go off and to give their feedback uh, to the Drupal community if there's an issue and trying to make, tr make sure that we've reached out to them so that if there are problems that they, they know that they can, can reach out to the Drupal community and get a positive response. And, and we've uh, uh, certainly, for most modules and, and most themes, when we've, we've identified an accessibility problem, people are really quite generous to go off and to deal with, uh, to, to try and address that. So, yeah. All right, let's talk about that more. This will be the last question. We're four minutes over. Uh, this is actually, I, I guess, more of a response to the question of how can we get people to do testing and uh, get some coverage. Um, one thing that uh, I'm working on a distribution at a university, uh, a customized distribution that uh, we have developed a training guide for, uh, and the training guide covers a lot of the core things that p content creators do every day in Drupal. And so something like uh, taking a training guide and pointing some to that and say, okay, you can evaluate the process of using this of this this process by following this training guide, and uh, how you That's might clever. you know to w with whatever your assistive technology is, and can you do these core functions like adding users, creating content, editing content, and rather than necessarily looking at it as we have to evaluate all these admin pages, to more look at it in, in a usability standpoint of we have these tasks that people need to do, and we already have a lot of documentation help documentation that we could just point people to and say, hey, can you evaluate this process using your technology? That's a great idea. I, that would really be a great place to start. Um, then make sure I get your card before you leave. <laughs> great, thank you everybody. <laughs> and while I still have power of the microphone, I told Brian Hirsch that I would announce a sprint on Friday. Can I go ahead? Oh. Tonight. Tonight. Uh, tonight, 7.30, Coders Lounge in the Doubletree Hotel, DrupalCon's Oklahoma Tornado Support Codathon. Uh, we'll be working to help the victims and emergency responders on the ground. We want to develop a website that will coordinate the transportation and help deal with housing issues. If you have time, tonight, Doubletree, 7.30.